my mother had decided, as my father had been offered this fantastic job in Australia, that in 1958 we should all go out there and it would be a very good upbringing for us as children. I, um, I had a brother at that time, my sister was then later born out in Australia. So I went to school, went to drama school and then I wanted to come back and I wanted to work over here as an actress. My mother thought it would be nice to come with me and we arrived here and I got a job and I was up in Sheffield and my mother took an apartment in London saw a lot of all her old friends uh, and it was while I was in Sheffield that um, the This Is Your Life team got in touch with me and said that they wanted to do the programme and that I had to be very quiet about it and then they asked my advice well, who perhaps should come on the programme. My father was in Australia and my brother and sister were both in Australia and so there were you know conversations on the phone and conversations I remember with the researchers. The difficult part was keeping the secret because I was so excited and uh, I knew my father was flying out and then eventually knew that my brother and sister were as well and I knew my mother would be so, so thrilled by the whole experience. I didn't think I'd be able to appear. I thought I was going to either do a sort of televised broadcast or just a voiceover or something like that because I was working and very strangely, it was nothing to do with This Is Your Life or anything. Monday night was cancelled. It was off. I don't know why. It really wasn't anything to do with the, the programme. And so I was able to go and die, which is great. I did have a run through because it was lucky because it because of Godfrey Wynne. The whole idea, the premise was that my mother thought she was giving an interview for Godfrey Wynne, who was a friend and a very popular journalist at the time. And he adored her and he even probably got this whole thing set up as far as I know. Uh, and yes, all the guests and family were in the studio, so it was easy for them. We, we were there and I think we must have had a little kind of, you come on now and this is where you sit and this is, you know, you tell your little story and, and all that. Mm -hmm. And of course I saw my father and my brother and sister, we all had to be so quiet. And... Um, then when my mother was brought into the studio, if you look very carefully, Eamon actually goes backstage, sort of behind the flats, and you see my mother walking along a corridor with Godfrey, thinking she's doing an interview with Godfrey Wynne. And she's got a glass in her hand, and it's a large whiskey and soda, because she thought she'd be sitting there and doing a little rehearsal. And she walks into this darkened studio, because all the audience is told to be quiet. By Eamon. And Eamon in the dark says hello Cookie and she knows Eamon and she says hello darling with her whiskey and soda and it, she said to me after she said I, I was completely I thought what's happened to Eamon he's not presenting anything more he's a floor manager good heavens <laughs> she could she was surprised she had no idea and within that split second of Googie with us, this is your life, and the audience applauding, somebody whizzed up, took the whiskey and soda and dashed off so she, she didn't have that glass in her hand throughout. She, she checked the tears, bless her. They, they, they flooded out at the end when my brother and sister came on, but you know, she sort of checked them for as, for as long as possible. And, and lovely Keith Michelle, who she'd done a tour with around Australia of Shakespeare plays. Um, Michael Redgrave, who she'd worked with about six times, know, knew very, very well and, and remained friendly with all the family. And Michael Powell, uh, who'd really set her kind of film career going because he did Quota Quickies with Made in the 30s and my mother appeared in about 30 or 25 or something of them, you know, they kept on making all these little, little films. Fantastic for her to learn her craft. She always played ditzy blondes. She did a George Formby, for instance, sort of film, things like that. And it was Michael Powell who cut his teeth, as did Alfred Hitchcock on those quota quickies, who um, remembered her and said, I, I think actually you could really do some drama. And he did One of Our Craft is Missing, which they show a clip of. And that's how she then, from then on, really, her career, you know, 
sword. I think Eamon um, actually did what his researchers and Eamon Andrews really did their homework. I was very impressed seeing it again, how much they knew. And uh, I don't think it was just me and my father feeding them. I think that they really did work on that properly. My darling grandmother made a bit of a botch of my mother's name and how she got it because my grandmother said something, I think it was fear in front of the camera. Um, and how my mother's face doesn't change, I think is brilliant on the part of my mother because mummy's name really came, um, she was born in India and she had an Indian nanny and ayah and it's very common to call little girl babies in India googie and so there are a lot of googies in India uh, and then they grow out of that name they have you know but, but it stuck with mummy and it was a good name to have and then I think the Marcel Hellman story about who wants to change googie, googie is easy to say, who can say this is, which is a lovely story and why she never changed it. Well, I think really all I remember her is that, you know, what a shock it had been. And she was told she remembered she had a whiskey in her hand and felt guilty about that. She said, you're very naughty, Godfrey. I can remember going up and saying, you are wicked, wicked, wicked man, stringing me along and not telling me, but at the same time delighted. And there was a wonderful party. It was a great show for her at that time. And, you know, when you think that that was in 1971, and then in 1973, when she comes back, having gone back to Australia for a little while, and then comes back here to do Within These Walls, and she had a whole different career. It sort of took off all over again. I think people were encouraged to bring stories, like um, dear Raymond Huntley, who is a great friend, talking about lending her a penny to uh, when she was only a young girl on a tram in Brighton. Mine I, I th seems to have gone out the window. I don't think that was even a story. I don't think I knew what I was saying about waving my hands around and I think I just talked nonsense. I don't know if I had a proper story or not. I think I, because I was, as I said, I so wanted to get on there and give her a big hug. I think that this, this is our life for my mother. Was it was a, a, a wonderful meld of all the things that, that at that time would have been fantastic for her. She'd been away from England for a long time. She'd come back principally to bring me back to this country. And suddenly she had an opportunity where her past glories, which they were, she was a really well-known film star, were shown on television on a very, very popular programme. I knew this would be fantastic for her. It was a complete surprise. It showed her history. It brought her back into the limelight. So it was good publicity. But it also showed, had the other side for my mother, which is very, very strong right the way through. It brought her family all together with her in England. And that was um, you know, wonderful because she was a very, very strong family person. So it was, uh, it was kind of a gift. It was very nice.